everybody, Noah Davidson here, and today I have a quick tutorial for you on how to set up moving averages on your Think or Swim charts. It is really easy to set up your moving averages on the Think or Swim charts, and it only takes a couple of minutes. And if you stay with me to the end, not only will I show you which moving averages I use and why, I'll also show you how you can use these moving averages to help you gauge strength and momentum in stocks or to identify potential weakness in the market and to identify opportunities to buy things. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So what I have for you here is a clean and simple chart. I've, I've chosen Amazon just out of a hat and I'm going to apply some moving averages to this chart. I'm gonna start out with a shorter term traders moving average. Now, whether you are a trader and or an investor or a position trader somewhere in between, it really doesn't matter. I like to put those short term moving averages on my chart to help me understand price momentum, short term trends, reversions to the mean. There's a handful of applications that we can use with these moving averages. Now, the short term moving average I like to use is a nine period exponential moving average. And the reason I like to use the nine period exponential moving average is for two reasons. One, the average swing cycle between support and resistance when prices are oscillating up and down is about nine to 10 days. And an exponential moving average is more responsive to the short term changes in price. And that's why I use the exponential moving average for the short term moving average instead of a simple moving average because this particular moving average I want to be sensitive to those short term price swings. So to add that to my chart, I go up here to the top, this little beaker right here, this little icon where you put your cursor over that, it'll pop up, it'll say edit studies. And if I click on that, it gives me a big old drop down menu of all the types of indicators I could possibly add to a chart. And just looking at that list right there will give you analysis paralysis. Now to add an exponential moving average, I'm gonna type in this little search bar here, EXP, just short for exponential. And that narrows it down and I can see, oh there, there it is, MOV, AVG, exponential. Moving average exponential. I'm gonna click on that. And the default setting here in Thinkorswim is nine, which tells me that they know a thing or two about technical analysis there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and edit this study. I'm gonna click on this little, this little cogwheel over here on the right. And the, if you wanted to change the number of periods you were tracking, and say you wanted to use a 13 period exponential moving average, or maybe you wanted to use a five period exponential moving average, you can change the length of the moving average. I'm gonna stick with nine, and then I'm gonna go change the color setting on this moving average. I always use a magenta color setting just because that's my habit. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna click on OK, and apply, and that will show up on my chart. So now I have a short term, nine period ex exponential moving average on my chart, and it helps me identify the short term trend. If the price is above the nine period exponential moving average, you're in a short term uptrend. If the price is below the exponential moving average, your price is in a short term downtrend. And what I can look for is when the price moves too far away from the moving average, and or when it crosses over the moving average, those can be signals for me to help me understand timing of the short term market a little bit better. Right now, Amazon's price is trading below the nine period moving average, showing me that there is short term weakness in that trend, obviously. And now I can go and add my other moving averages. I'm going to add on three more moving averages. And all of these moving averages are going to be simple moving averages. And these are the most popular, the most commonly used moving averages in the industry. And they've been popularized just over years and years and years of use. Early technical analysts, before the advent of the personal computer, used to graph their price action by hand. They used to put the price of the asset on graph paper and plot that out by hand, and then they would calculate 
moving averages of that price. And the three most popular moving averages are a 20 period simple moving average, a 50 period simple moving average, and a 200 period moving average. Now, why 20, 50, and 200? That's a great question. The 20 period simple moving average is a approximation of one month. Now there are technically 21 trading days on average in a month because of course the weekends, the markets are closed and you know holidays randomly occasionally. So on average, the number of trading days in a month is 21. But early technical analysts didn't even have pocket calculators. And so they just rounded it down to 20 to do the math to make it simple. So we're gonna add a 20 period period simple moving average to our chart. And I'm going to type in the word simple here after opening up that window. S-I-M-P, there it is, simple moving average. And it defaulted to nine as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on that little cog wheel and change the number of periods to 20. And I always leave my 20 period moving average the cyan color just because that's my habit. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and I'm going to apply that to the chart. And now I have a monthly moving average that helps me again track those shorter term price movements. And I can watch for opportunities where the price action gets a little too far away from that 20 period moving average. When the stock price moves up really fast and gets really far away from that short term moving average, there's a super high probability it's going to revert back to the mean. And a 20 period moving average is a really good mean identifying moving average. And so again, we look for above the 20 period moving average is a good signal you're in an uptrend. If it's below the 20 period moving average, that could be a good signal that you have a weakening trend or it's moving into a downtrend. And here you can see where the price crosses above the moving averages and crosses below. And then there's this little interplay and dance between the short term nine period exponential and the 20 period simple. And what traders might look for is when the stock price crosses below the moving averages and the two moving averages cross over. That's a sell signal when the two moving averages cross back up and the price violates above the moving averages, that is a short term buy signal. So you get that buy signal and boom, the prices are off to the races. It got too far away from the 20 period moving average. There's some profit taking prices revert back to the mean. When prices come down between the nine and the 20, that can be a buy setup. It's called the bull area where you look for the price to come down to that 20 period moving average and it acts as a catalyst and prices take off again. When prices violate below the moving average, again, that can be a signal that the short term trend is over. And when prices move sideways and they kind of oscillate in a range, moving averages kind of get messy. It kind of turns into what we call moving average soup, where it just prices are, are jumbling up and down and the moving averages are kind of wiggling. And it's, it's, it's not going to give us clear buy and sell signals, but it's a very simple way to identify uptrend, sideways trend, downtrend. Hold on a second. You're not still trying to learn stock investing from YouTube clips and Reddit threads, are you? That's information, not a strategy. And when your hard earned money is on the line, don't you want to feel confident in how you're investing it? That's why over 100,000 students have trained with the Cashflow Academy, because we teach a simple step by step roadmap that builds real investing skill. So stop gambling your financial future on random tips and tricks online and start learning to do this the right way. Hit the link in the description below for free access to our beginning investor hub and get started today. Now back to your video. Now what I'm going to add is a 50 period simple moving average and why 50? Well, if there's 21 days in a month, that means there's on average 63 days in a quarter. And again, remember those early technical analysts, they just rounded off the number down to 50 to make the math easier. And so they just got used to that. And that's just what everybody has used ever since. So we're going to add a 50 period simple moving average. I'm going to go type in simple again, click on that simple moving average. And this time we're going to go ahead and edit that. I'm going to change it to 50. Now, whatever color you choose is up to you. I like to differentiate those in my habit for the 50 period moving average is green. And I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. 
I'm gonna apply that to my chart. And now I have a quarterly moving average on the chart. Now this takes a lot more data to calculate than a monthly moving average or a nine period moving average. And it lags behind the price significantly. And what we look for here is again, crosses below the moving average to signal change to downtrend and downward sentiment crosses back above that 50 period moving average to signal that the buyers are back. And we also watch the interplay between the shorter term moving averages and the longer term moving averages. And so when prices are trading above the 50 period moving average, that is a sign of strength. When prices are trading above all of the moving averages, you're definitely in an uptrend. When prices are trading below those moving averages, that's a signal that the sentiment has shifted. And right now, if you look at Amazon, it's down below the nine, it's down below the 20, and it's down below the 50, and they're in descending order. So you can actually see that this is a possible reversal signal. But I wonder what the longer term investors are thinking. And so that's where adding on a 200 period simple moving average is really common. Very, very useful moving average. So I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to type in simple and I'm going to add the 200 period moving average and 200 periods, you guessed it, is the rounded down number early technical analysts used to approximate a year. There's 252 trading days on average in a year. Now that's obviously 365 calendar days in a year, but there's only 252 trading days in the year when the market is open. And so again, rather than try to calculate out 252, they just rounded it down to 200. I always set my 200 period moving average at yellow and I click on okay, apply that to my chart. And now I have a 200 period moving average and the 200 period moving average is the investor moving average. So a really simple way to think about this is the shorter term moving averages, the nine and the 20 traders, the 50 period moving average position traders, longer term than swing traders, but not longer, not as long term as investors. And then the 200 period moving average is that longer term averaged out kind of annualized estimate of the price average. And definitely we look for above the 200 period moving average and below the 200 period moving average. And again, moving averages can act like catalysts for buyers and sellers. And there's this really fun interplay between the shorter term, intermediate term and longer term moving averages. Now, Amazon prices have dropped. They are currently touching the 200 period moving average. And that is a very powerful agent for change. Traders and investors will look to buy things when they touch their 200 period moving average. And they'll look to sell things if it violates below, or they'll look to buy things when it confirms back up above. And so they're used as confirmation signals. Now, the fun thing about these moving averages is they work on all time frames. We just happen to be on a daily chart. But if I back this out and I set that to a three year weekly chart, now what we're looking at is a nine period weekly exponential moving average, a 20 week moving average, a 50 week moving average, which is pretty close to that annual moving average, right? And then a 200 week moving average. And so right now I can say that Amazon is overall in a primary uptrend. It's definitely found resistance out at 240. And at this moment in time, prices are pulling down, but they're hitting a rising 50 week moving average. On the daily chart, it was a 200 period moving average. And we're heading deeper into the fourth quarter now. And so the big question is, will people be buying stuff on Amazon this Christmas? Probably. Will the price action confirm up? Maybe. But my moving averages can help me assess the strength of that stock. They can help me analyze and identify opportunities to potentially buy stocks that I'm interested in potentially sell stocks that I'm interested in. And we can also use these moving averages to help us scan for opportunities. And in the next video, what I show you is how I use the FinViz platform to scan for opportunities using six or seven different settings where I set some core settings and then I actually use some moving averages to scan for things 
And you can play around with what you look for. Is the price above the moving averages? Is the price below the moving averages? Is the stock price crossing the moving average? These are things that we can scan for to help us find the right things to buy and the right things to sell. If you enjoyed this video, again, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.